Hey, I'm Michael Barrier, and today I want to show you why I think buying and investing in businesses is the fastest way to owning million dollar plus business. Now, the coolest thing is you can go there and be there literally within a matter of few months, even if you have no experience or capital. Obviously, you need the right path, the right process and all that. But if you know what to do, you can get there pretty fast. So if you're new to this channel, which most of you probably are, um, here's a, a quick few seconds on why you should listen to me. So first of all, I've been involved in 12 businesses over the last 10 years, um, some seven figure businesses I made, um, I guess compared to what I know now, not a lot of money, but for, for a young 20 something year, year old kid, I made a lot of money. I lost a lot of money. And now I'm here basically sharing and documenting my journey as someone who's out there looking to invest and buy businesses. Uh, as is, this is what I'm doing for a living for the last few years. This is all my life 24 seven. I'm, I'm basically here sharing and documenting, hopefully helping a few of you guys. Like even if I'll help one of you guys, I think it's gonna make me feel good. And at the same time, I don't care. I like to talk to this camera. It makes me feel cool, feel unique. So why not? And I know looking in a few years, like a few, in few years, if I look back to those videos, it's gonna be interesting to see where I'm gonna be in a few years um, watching my journey as well. So I hope you enjoy it um, again. Why you should listen to me? Been involved in many businesses. I worked with mentors who did billion dollar worth of deals. Some of them almost billionaires in net worth. Um, one of my partners, my main partners, he, he did himself more than fifty billion dollars worth of deals and transactions. And I'm, I'm basically there learning um, and and trying to to get there as well myself. I, I want to share with you quickly why I think buying businesses is the best way to go. Um, not even just for money, but also for your lifestyle decision. And just to give you an idea when I started one of my first businesses um, I got to a point after almost a year where I made a lot of money in that business I'm talking um, basically just to put you in perspective around 10 grand a day in profit and we got to a point I mean that business was a, a easy seven plus figure business a year and we made a lot of money at the same time every morning where I woke up I literally hated my day-to-day -day job I, I was I, I suffered like I was doing things that I just didn't enjoy you know looking at needy greedy and just looking into numbers too much and and campaigns and i'm like I, I really hated it and just working with some of the things that i did i remember one day waking up and saying to myself hey i don't care how much money i'm making with it i don't want to do it anymore um luckily or unluckily uh, that that business we had to shut it down for whatever reason i'm happy to get into it at, at some of the future videos but we had to shut it down eventually and i had to go through i guess the next paradigm in my life which is what I'm doing right now, buying and investing in businesses. And I can tell you that in the end of the day, I believe that you gotta find something that you enjoy in your day to day. If you're not enjoying today, you're not gonna enjoy your future. Don't, don't wait to achieve something in the future in order to allow yourself to be happy today. And that's, I guess, a motto that I'm trying to live with and buy or, and, and yeah, I think it's really important. I think I don't care how much money you're gonna make in the end of the day. If you're not enjoying your day to day, it's it just not worth it. So yeah, today I'm at a point where our company, what we're doing is we're looking out there for businesses to buy. Um, and we're acting as the, the, the shareholders of our company, our investment group, you can say. We're acting as shareholders, as owners, as kind of chairman of those businesses. And we have people, every business that we're going to look into, we're going to make sure that there's someone running those businesses for us. Um, again, I really believe you can do it really fast. If you know the path, you can close deal really really fast and for many of you one deal can change your life like many people who talk to me they have full-time jobs they want to go out there and have their freedom back they want to be able to travel and again and i said it in the last video all the things out there are talking about starting a business i believe buying a business can get you there faster and in a much more enjoyable way and in the end of the day what the, this process of investing and buying in businesses i think it's really cool because the thing you're involved with in your day to day is the art of the deal is dealing with people is interacting with really, really interesting people, which there, there's many few other type of businesses or jobs, you can say, where you can do that. Just be involved with people, interacting with people. You don't need to be uh, too much of a social guy, but you do need to be curious about people. I think if you want to be successful in this space, like I I'm not talking too much when I'm talking to business owner, I'm mostly there to listen and, and kind of like understand from their point of view, their story, their business. And I try to find all these ways to make it win-win scenarios for us to buy their businesses, for them to have some kind of a 
a good exit strategy. If you like this type of content talking about investing, buying businesses, make sure to subscribe, comment below, let me know your questions and click the, the, the bell button. I heard it's important. So yeah, why, let's, let's go back to the main topic of the, the video, right? We said $1 million business as fast as possible. I said three months. I really believe that if you have the path and process, you can close that deal really, really fast. Why my 1 million business? It just, you know, million is cool. Everyone out there, when we're trying to get into the space of business, the first goal they have in mind is I want to um, get to a million. I want to be a million, um, so, so to speak. So we want to have that as a goal. I want to show you kind of like as a step-by-step -step process on how to get there because it's, it's cool and easy to say, hey, I'm, I'm working on, on becoming a millionaire. But if you actually want to get there, you need to have a step-by-step -step process and just make sure you do those steps every day until you get there. So I want to show you the exact steps you can take in order to get there yourself as soon as possible. Now, again, when I'm talking 1 million, I'm not talking um, net worth or revenues or sales. I'm talking profit. And that's a huge, huge difference for all of you guys who, who don't know the difference. I guess you never had a business before. Um, I see many people out there talking about uh, different, you know, they have lots of webinars on how to get to six figures in, in in the next few months and stuff like that. But they don't say that it's revenues, it's sales. And in the end of the day, most of the businesses that you talk to, all the businesses that you talk to, the amount of sales are not equal to the amount of profit that the owner is taking home. I hope you understand that, right? So if you want to be a legit profit or a legit cash millionaire, you need to make that amount in profit. After, obviously, you need to include taxes and all that and i'm not an accountant i'm not gonna get into taxes and all that but in the end of the day you want to get to a point where you get into one million after taxes ideally so you need to get that much more than that in profit again profit not sales and profit the difference between profit or what i'm looking at is the net income is basically the number that you get to after you reduce all the expenses in the business so anywhere for employees, marketing expenses, etc., etc. right? So again, our goal here is to get you $1 million in profit. And I want to show you what I believe is the best way to get there by buying and investing in businesses. So the first option is get to a point where you buy a business that can, can bring you home each year 250,000 and do that for four years. If you do that, you have that 1 million, right? Now, again, you can take that over a few years at the same time, you can buy that business, which will give you that amount of money within two, three months. So you basically buy that business within two, three months, you own that business, you have someone running that business for you, but you're taking money out every time. It's basically passively. Obviously, I don't really believe in passive income, but you do have a business pretty much running for you. You're the one making sure that business is keeping running well, and you have a general manager, a GM, sending you reports and you're just, making sure that all that machine is working well for you. You can take 250 a year profit. You do that for four years, you get into 1 million. And obviously the second option to get to that point is buy a business. Uh, again, you can take that money every year and you can do it in different ways. Obviously you can take as the shareholder, again, I'm not an accountant, but there's a few ways to take money out of a business. You can take it as an income, as a, a consulting fee, dividends, whatever, right? Consult your your advisors and see what's the best way for you to take the money out. Uh, again, if you buy a business that's making you that amount of money, there's there's few ways. So here's how I see it, right? Every business that we buy, there's few ways and times where you can take money out. First time is when you buy that business, you raised capital to buy that business and you usually take some kind of amount at completion. So as soon as you close that deal, you can take money out and that money alone can can get up to a very nice amount obviously depends on the size of the business that's the first amount you can take again like we said before you can take then yearly ongoing income salaries dividends all that stuff and the third way to take money out is by exiting the business by selling the business and um, how you making money at exit is obviously whatever someone willing to pay you so let's say you have a business making you i don't know three hundred thousand dollars in profit when you sell the business, someone will come value your business in whatever way. And just to keep it simple, I'm happy to, to create videos on that in the future on how to value business. But just to keep things simple now, we value businesses usually uh, on multiples of profit. So, for example, um, let's just work on a, on a basic rule of thumb. We can say we, we can buy a business at five times multiples of profit. That's kind of like a nice average multiples across different industries. So let's say you buy a business making you 200,000 in profit, you sell it for five times 
that amount, you get $1 million, right? And that's a business, again, that you can buy within two, three months, not working the day to day, have your lifestyle, take income out of it, and then take more money at exit. Uh, I believe that's the best way to get to that point. I believe it's much easier than going and starting a business. Again, most businesses are going to fail. Look at the stats there. I don't care what business you start. Most businesses, you most li likely going to put an amount of money that is many, many times more than you need to buy a business. Because again, when we're buying a business, we're not using our capital. We're using financial partners capital, most likely. Obviously, you can use your capital, but there's and again, there's nothing wrong with using your capital in deals. It's up to you on where, when you have capital, where do you see are the best places for you to deploy your capital for, for your money to go out there and work for you, right? And it could be investing them in businesses, which I think is great. It can be in real estate if you want something more secure. Or nowadays you can invest in crypto, which everyone out there is talking about. And yeah, I'm, I'm there as well, but um, that, that's for any, a, a different video. So what I'm trying to tell you, and again, it's obviously easier said than done, right? You need to buy the business, you need to take income out of it, you obviously want to exit that, easier said than done. I agree 100%, uh, but again, I think it's easier than starting a business and get to that point. Because remember, when you buy existing business, many times you're already making nice amounts of profit. When you start something from scratch to get to a point where you can sell that business for a million dollar, um, boy, that's that's not easy from, from scratch. Like. Again, just look at the stats out there. I don't care what business you start, even if in, in, in the space of gurus and, and online marketing scams not right now, everyone talking about e-commerce, social media, show me someone who created a social media agency and sold it for $1 million within a few months. No way. There's got to be something very, very unique there to happen for you to do that. So what I'm suggesting is why won't you find an existing social media agency that's already existing for five, 10 years and just buy them. And what I'm trying to say here is guys, one deal in that space of buying businesses can change your life. You don't need to focus on too many deals unless eventually after your first deal, maybe you wanna do what I'm doing, which is just do this for a living. Go out there, invest in businesses, buy more businesses, build some kind of portfolio of businesses. That's all good. But for most of you out there, one deal can basically change your life and get you to a point where you make enough money to live the lifestyle that you want. And when you make that money, you're just not in a rush to do anything. And that's where inspiration can come in. And you can pretty much go out there and, and you know, and, and decide what you want to do with your life. It's, if it's travel, if it's spending time with your family, if it's just go out there and buy and invest in more businesses. I'm at a point I see it as, as the coolest game out there. I've, I traveled in pretty much any country I want to visit and see. And there, there's, no, there's nothing out there for me that I'm... I, I, I kind of feel like I, I did a lot already and I'm just at a point that I just want to grow and expand and I feel like business is the best place for me to contribute as well. So you'll see, you'll get to a point after you do one or two deals, it's just cool, I'm, I'm making good money, what's now? And I think that this is getting to a point where if you find thing that you'll do anyway, even if money wasn't involved, that's the thing for you, that's what you want to do. So again, we kind of agreed on what type of business we want, right? We want a business that will give us um, at least 250,000 a year for four years, or we want a business that will give us some kind of an exit within, and again, that exit can be sometimes within a year, two, three years, up to you, you decide when you want to sell a business, obviously you need to figure out who and when it's going to buy it from you. So let's assume we want to buy a business that's going to give us either 250,000 a year for four years, or we want to buy a business that eventually, as soon as we sell it, going to give us $1 million um, in, in exit price, right? So those are the two best ways. Obviously, there's going to, going to be more money you can take at closing and completion, but that's up to you. It depends on the size of the business, but let's say it's going to be hard to take 1 million in cash at closing. So let's assume that most of the money is going to come either throughout the years of you owning that business or at exit. So I guess that the, the next question is obviously, how do we do that, right? How do we go out there and buy those businesses? And I want to keep things as simple as possible at this stage. Obviously, every video we're going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to dive into each of those topics. But for now, let's keep things, things simple. I want you to, to have this list of, hey, I need to do A, B, C, D. If I do that, I can buy a business. If I buy that business, I have my dream. I achieved my financial freedom. Now I can do what I want and decide if I want to, I don't know, go and, and travel the world or I just want to be involved in more businesses. So the process in a nutshell, there are a few steps. I'm going to walk you through them right now and we'll go through each of them individually and expand on them as well. 
So number one, obviously you need to pick a sector um, and, and an idea or what type of business you want. And obviously let's, let's go through the steps first and then I'll expand on it. So number one, pick a sector, pick, pick a niche. Number two, you need to find the deal. So we said, first of all, pick the, sec pick the sector and I guess the criteria for your business to meet your goals, to, to get to that one million. Number two, find the deal. Number three, negotiate that deal. Number four, you need to start and make offers on that deal. Then number five, you need to finance that deal, find a way to finance that acquisition, which I'm gonna expand as well. Six is obviously you closing the deal, all the agreements, you have accountants, lawyers, you get into the agreement of you purchasing the business. Um, like when you buy a house, you sit with the lawyers and all that, you sign everything, and then you own the, the house, same with business. And number seven is what happens when you own the business, how to grow it. So you have seven steps. Let's go through each one of them a little bit and expand on them so you understand what you need to do, how to do that, and what's the next step for you. So number one was pick a niche and pick the criteria for your business. So again, your niche, if you looked at my last video, you need to find some kind of combination of passion, experience, location, and you want to combine that with your goal. So let's say we said our goal is to get to 1 million. We want to find a business that's going to provide you that amount again, either that 250 a year, or you can see that you have business doing at least 200,000 in profit, which potentially you believe you can sell for five times multiples, which will give you that 1 million. So that's number one. Number two is finding the deal. So how do you find deals? And there are many, many ways to find potential deals. And we use at least 10 different ways on a daily basis to find those deals. And I'm happy to explain on them moving forward. But just to give you an example of how you can find good businesses to buy, like to put it in the simple way, you can go out there, use LinkedIn, for example. You can use LinkedIn, change your title to investor. Try it for a week and you'll see you'll get so many friend requests, you'll be overwhelmed by offers, you'll get deal flow that is like, holy shit, what, what is this? What do I do with, the, with that amount of deal flow right now? That's just one really, really cool way for you to find deals. Go out, I want you to go out, try that. If you, if you don't want to, if you don't care, go change your LinkedIn profile to an investor and see how many requests you're getting over the next few weeks. It's gonna be a really cool experience for you to have. So that's one cool way to find deals. And just a few other simple ways for you to find deals. And again, I can expand on that obviously, but just to give you an example, check your phone. I'm sure, especially if you have some kind of business experience, you have people in your phone where you can call and they can use their network as well. And just tell them, hey, um, I'm, I'm now an investor. I'm looking to buy and invest in businesses. Are you familiar or know or heard of anyone who's looking to potentially start their business or looking for an investment? Do that, you'll see, even just by sending messages to your close circles, like go to your phone, send messages to everyone you know who can potentially be involved with business and meet them for a coffee, talk to them, see what they're up to and tell them, hey, I'm looking to, to invest in businesses. Do you know anyone or heard about anyone? And many times, if they're the business owner, they'll tell you, hey, I'm actually looking to sell. I, I wanna do this something else and I'd love to, to have an investment from someone, especially like you, I know and trust. So. Here are two cool ways for you to find deals. And trust me, those two ways alone can find you really, really cool deals. So try them and comment below and let me know what you think. And yeah, remember, if you like this type of content, subscribe, hit the, the bell button and let me know what you think. Comment below, let me know in general what you think and ask me questions. Now, number three, negotiate. How do you negotiate deals? And obviously there's a lot to talk about negotiation, psychology, how to build rapport with people. I want, you, I want to summarize what I believe is the most important thing when you negotiate with a business owner, especially the type of deals that we're looking to do. You want to position yourself as the trusted investor, right? You want to position yourself as someone who's going to take care of that, that owner baby, pretty much. Like those business owners that we were talking to many times, business owners that I'm talking to, they're owning those businesses for 10, 20 years. This is all their life. They're treating that, those businesses like their baby. And you need to be that person who's out there and telling them, hey, look, I'll treat that business just like you. It's gonna be my baby, just as it was your baby, um, as, as weird as it, as it sounds. So again, and that's why it's so important to use your close network when you try to find deals. Because if you find a deal from someone you already know, that trust factor is already there. They already know you, already trust you. And it's just gonna be and make things so much easier when you negotiate on a deal with them.
Number four is making offers. Now, again, we can talk about that alone forever. Your first offer shouldn't be more than three times multiples on their profit. Or, and obviously you can talk about what, what profit last year, what if the profit is different, etc., etc. Let's keep, keep it simple. Take the last three years, take the profit from each year, do some kind of um, average and use that number and send an offer for three times multiples of that. Right? So that's how we make offers. Again, the simple way possible. I want you to move forward. I want you to experiment. I want you to fail forward, as, as, we, as we say. Number five is all about, all about financing your deal. So obviously, let's say you find a deal, you made an offer, you, you, maybe someone said yes. The question is now, how do you finance that deal, right? Now, you can use obviously your money if you want, which is up to you. You don't have to. If you don't have enough capital to work with, you can use other financial partners. It can be anywhere from banks. Financial institutions can be lots of different mezzanine financing, asset-based lenders, lots of different ways. It can be wealthy, private wealthy individuals, which you can raise capital from. Obviously, I'm making things sound much easier, again, easier said than done. But I want you to, first of all, have the overall perspective and vision on how the process looks like when you're going to move forward in the process. And again, I'm happy to expand it on each of those to give you a broad overview. But I think, in my opinion... Everything that I did in my life, the more I make things simple in my head, the more easier it's going to be. Because I don't care what, is it, what it is you're trying to achieve, everything, every skill comes down to really simple, short steps. And when you master them, you're going to be amazing. So I want to first of all show you the steps, and then every video that we're going to move forward in this journey, in this channel, I'm going to expand on each and help you understand the process and kind of like get you really in the mastery in, in that space of buying businesses. Number six is all about closing the deal and how to, obviously you need accountants, lawyers, I can talk about that in, in the future as well. We actually have a way where we get the accountants and lawyers to pretty much work for us for free. Basically what we call a uh, success fee base or delayed um, payments. So we basically pay those accountants and lawyers only if and when we close the deal. So for example, if we start to do due diligence on that business and we find something that, that we don't like, we don't pay them until we actually close. And number seven is after you closed everything, you've done with the agreements and all that, you signed, you're not the owner of the business. Now it's your time to grow the business. Now, again, remember our goal is not, it, not to run the business day to day. We want to have a general manager running that, those businesses for us. And that's something that again, we need to go back to step number one. When we find the business and find the criteria, we need to only talk to businesses where we can see in our vision who's going to own those businesses for us. So it's really important. If you don't want to run the business day to day, which you can, it's up to you, right? But if you don't want to do that, you need to make sure you find a business with a general manager in there or with someone who can potentially take that role. And again, I'm happy to expand on that moving forward on what are the options for us when we're looking to buy a business on who's owning that business. There's few ways for us to work with. So for example, if the owner is looking to exit, we have different ways to work with. If he's looking to stay in the business, there's different ways to work with. So I'm happy to expand on that as well in the future, obviously. Again, subscribe and, and let me know if you want me to expand on it. Um, so yeah, what we're doing, we need a general manager. And then many times we'd like to bring in consultants to help us grow the business even further. So I, I don't care who are you, how many years you own the business, how many years, you're running the business many times, especially general managers, they're just so in the business, they forget to look at new technology, new new practices for their industry or, or just in general for business. And we like to bring consultants who can help us um, help with that. And that's how we can grow the business further and obviously increase the profitability. So when we sell the business, we won't sell it just for one million, it can be much higher price and then we can just enjoy the fruits even more. So yeah, I, I hope you like those few steps. Again, I want to keep it as simple as possible, guys, for you at this stage, just for you to understand the process. Because if this is the first time you heard about the, the idea of buying a business, you probably don't understand what comes after what. So I want to put everything in perspective, just in a simple once A, B, C. I want you to, to learn how that works and every video we're going to expand on each. But remember, all you need is one deal. You're literally far away, just one deal far away from achieving your deals, your, your goals, your dreams, your lifestyle. And that's what I want you to focus on, even if it's gonna take you more than a few months. I mean, heck, if it's gonna take you one year to close a deal, you don't think it's worth it? Like the businesses that we're looking to buy right now with my company are businesses doing at least one million a year in sales. 
for most of you guys out there to own a business doing at least one million a year in sales, that's going to change your life. So even if it's going to take you a few months or even a year to master and do just one deal, I think it's worth it, don't you? So after you learn about the, the overall few steps, I want, if you want to get even more focused, there are only two things you need to focus on in this space of in investing and buying businesses. And so, so again, if you want to really condense down to, to the last one, two things that you need to do on a day-to-day basis, I would say there's only two things you need to do as an investor. One of them is to build yourself a better deal flow. And the second thing is raise capital. If you can master those two, this space, you, you can master this space and make a lot of money. There's only two things you need to focus on. Like the seven steps I gave you, yeah, obviously you need to understand them and know them. But if you need to master only two things, I'd say focus on building deal flow and raising capital. If you'll know how to do that, you'll be gold. And the, the, and the reason I'm, I'm giving you those two things, because if you haven't heard about the, the 80-20 principle, you know that basically 20% of things you do bring you 80% of results. And in the space of buying businesses, this is 100% the truth. There's two things you need to do on a day-to-day basis. If you're doing them, you'll be successful. So remember guys, you have the stops, you have the seven steps, you have the two things to focus on more than anything. And like I said, like one of the people I look up to and kind of like a mentor of mine is closing four deals a month. Guys, four deals, each of those businesses doing at least one million a year. He's following the exact same steps that I'm showing you here. Like this is where I'm trying to aim to as well with, with our company to get to a point where we're closing those amount of deals every month. And that's the exact things that he's doing. And he told me that the only way for him to grow as much and at this, at this stage as well is to go out there, raise more capital and find more deals. That's the only two things you need to focus on. You'll do that. You'll get to a point where you, you literally have no limits in your business. So to summarize everything, guys, remember you have a few steps do them take action i don't care if you don't have experience you don't have background try it fail forward you guys try it the best way for you to learn is by taking action like you yes you can read hundreds of books you can listen to all those videos it's great you'll learn a lot but in order to actually achieve the results that you want you gotta take action so i really urge you to maybe go through this video again look at the steps try to take action try to change just change your profile to an investor this week on LinkedIn and see what kind of responses you get. And you'll see when you start to get a few people adding you, sending you messages and pitching you. I mean, that alone can bring you motivation to continue to the next step. And maybe the next step for you to be to just, hey, let's let's try to, to talk to the owner. Let's try to get their financials to make an offer. So give it a try, guys. Fail forward. You can't succeed if you won't take action. So yeah, I'll leave you here with this video. Again, remember, this is possible, guys. We're doing it every day. This is what we're doing. Most of you don't have that experience. I want to show you that it's possible. I want you to put things in perspective. Again, it's a a simple process, but it's not easy. You only need to put in the time, the effort, take action. If you do that, that's all you need to do. It's numbers game, guys. Life is a numbers game. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the content that you want me and you want me to put more videos, just comment below on what kind of videos you like. Let me know what you liked in the video. What do you think I can do better? Because this is those are my first videos. I want to see how I can improve. I want to make it a cool YouTube channel. So let me know. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. Um, hit the, 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 the ring button. And I'll, I'll see you soon.